Okay, so now let's turn and look at the truth theories and specifically the pragmatic truth theory. So throughout the history of ideas, there have been three prevailing theories of truth. In other words, what truth is. And these have dominated Western thought. The pragmatists have a kind of an avant-garde new way of looking at truth uh, because they rejected the first two as being inadequate in some, some way or another. Pragmatist uh, truth theory presents this third way as the most authentic and honest of the three. So the first one we'll look at briefly is the correspondence theory of the truth. And this just seems to make most sense to most people. The truth is that which corresponds to the way things are, okay? So uh, the correspondence theory says that truth is that which corresponds to the way things are, that is, it corresponds to reality. And so this just seems to kind of have a natural ring true type of nature to it. But when you start thinking about it, it can become problematic. The pragmatists argue that, a, that this is no good because most people just apply this in a kind of a naive way. The world is the way I see it. And if I say, okay, well, you know, uh, you know that, that stop sign is red, then they think, well, you know, that corresponds to reality and so forth. But how do you know that the stop sign is red? How, you know, you, in other words, your perceptions of it can be slightly different from someone else's perceptions of it and so forth. The pragmatist would say, well, it's not really true, but that works. The stop sign is an effective tool for us to make people stop because it's red, you can, it's hard to miss, and, and so forth. Uh, but is it really true? No, well, no one really knows the way things are, and so truth is just something that works. It's not an accurate description of the way things are. So even though pragmatists were empiricists, uh, they knew that their observations of reality could be easily skewed. In other words, uh, getting at reality as it really is remains elusive. Uh, take, for example, uh, a compass. You look at a compass and you say, okay, well, it's pointing north. Well, is it really accurately true or not? How do you know that the compass is not being skewed in some way? How do you know that there's not some kind of magnetic uh, field somewhere that's throwing it off. Uh, how do you know that the compass is ac accurate and so forth? And so, uh, or take a clock, for example. I mean, we've often looked at a clock and we know sometimes that clocks are not accurately true, you know, and so they can be a little bit off and so forth. And so that's kind of the way they say that descriptions of reality are. They're like a clock that might be almost right, right enough, or a compass that might be off by a few degrees here or there, but it's, it's close enough, okay? You know, it points north close enough to get me out of the woods, okay? And so it doesn't really matter that it's hyper accurate. All that matters is that it works. And so all of our descriptions of reality don't really correspond to the world the way it is. They're just approximations, say the pragmatists, okay? So they reject the correspondence theory of truth because you can never know if your descriptions truly do correspond to reality. The next theory of truth that was prevalent in Western society was a coherence theory of truth. In other words, truth is coherence. This is very different from the correspondence theory. The coherence theory of truth holds that true claims are true because they are coherent with other true claims. So all truths fit together in a kind of a grand scheme of perfectly interlocking parts. Again, uh, just imagine a fine Swiss watch. You take off the back, you know, and, you know something that only fools and watchmakers do, but <laughs> that's what I was told, you know, don't do that. Uh, but uh, anyway, if you did take the back off a watch, you would see a very coherent system, very elaborate, uh, finely tuned, and every little gear and every lever inside there uh, fits together, okay? It's coherent. And so what makes something true is an idea that fits with other beliefs, okay? And that's the coherence theory of truth. Now, uh, Dewey and the pragmatists especially disdain this kind of thinking about truth. It rests on logic, but logic, they say, must have premises. Well, where did you get the premises from? You had to get those premises from empirical observations. 
So see, the coherentist theory is something that rationalists like because it all about, it's all about logic and whether ideas logically fit together. And so the, the pragmatists would say that logical thinking cannot alone provide truth because it has to start with things that logic simply can't provide. Moreover, many different systems of thought could be perfectly coherent but disagree. So you could have lots of different coherent systems, but they themselves don't agree. Okay, So they especially disdain the coherence theory of truth. The pragmatic theory of truth says that uh, in this new way of thinking is, is thinking about a very old pro problem about what is truth, uh, deals with how we find truth. First, we need to distinguish between the word pragmatics and praxis. Okay? Pragmatics focuses on the particulars, whereas the latter, the word praxis, means action and practice. And pragmatism comes from the word pragmata, or the particulars. Next, Pragmatism does not near, merely mean practicality, though there is some overlap. Things that are pragmatic can be practical, but sometimes things are practical that are not pragmatic, okay? So pragmatism means more than just an oversimplified statement of truth is that which works, okay? Uh, Dewey's instrumentalism is a kind of pragmatism, a special brand of pragmatism that focuses on how and what motivates us to embr embrace beliefs as true. We do so because believing something is true serves some kind of deep interest that we have. Uh, maybe we're not, not even conscious of that deep interest, something that compels us to try to flourish and to do well in this world. So beliefs are instrumental and functional, and they're not true in any absolute sense. So they're kind of like a tool you know, a pair of scissors or a hammer. I mean, is a pair of scissors true? Is a, is a hammer true? No, but if I need to drive a nail, the hammer is the best way to do it. That's what it's made for. Scissors are no good for that, okay? And so um, the hammer helps me to get something done that I need to do. Why do I need to drive that nail? You know, because my wife wants a picture hung on the wall, okay? And so I have an interest in keeping her happy, so I just look for what works. I don't, I'm not trying to find something that is true, in a sense, okay? And so that is the, the pragmatic theory of truth, and it stands over against the, the coherentist theories and the, the, um, the correspondence theories.